and welcome back to Kirkiston. Time now for the third superbike race of the day. The first two easily won by Rocket Ron Haslam on the Grand Prix 500 Suzuki. Can anyone stop him? Let's see. Chris Carter again. Can anybody stop Ron Haslam indeed, Jackie? That's the question that we are asking. Haslam going for his hat trick once again in pole position there on the Pepsi Suzuki. Haslam now living in small in Derbyshire. Got himself a nice little farm out there. He's turning into a mansion. And why not? He's been riding the Grand Prix trail for a long time. Deserves the rewards. And there's another man who's done well on the Grand Prix trail. Uh, Gary Cowan fitting his 250 Dock Shop Yamaha against uh, the big bikes. Next to him, number one, Eddie Laycock, Eddie Laycock from Dublin on the 500 Honda. Next to him, number nine, Roger Burnett on the 750 four-stroke uh, RC30 Honda. And uh, back to the man who has destroyed them all. Waiting for Carl Fogarty, I suspect, on the uh, front row of the grid. Well, Roger Marshall shakes his head. Problems for Carl Fogarty? Yes, in the uh, last leg, Carl went off the picture and uh, unfortunately his engine seized. So, Carl Fogarty then out of the action in this race, having destroyed the motor. And uh, number, number zero, Steve Cull, a bit late coming up onto the grid. Well, the uh, lineup a little bit uh, thin at the moment. Number 17, Philip McCallan. He's gone well uh, in uh, several of the races today. So we'll uh, wait and see. Perhaps this is the time that Steve Cull on the JPS Norton can uh, show exactly what he's made of. A depleted uh, grid, but certainly the quality is there, even if the quantity isn't, Roger. It certainly is, Chris. Uh... So, the... We're just waiting to get Steve Cole's uh, Norton fired up. They're on the front row of the grid. All eyes on the lights. This will be a 12-lapper. There is Haslam. Haslam then looking for the hat trick. And a bit of a ragged start, but Haslam not too badly away. And I think it's going to be the Norton. It is Steve Cole on the Norton who makes it. Roger Burnett in second place and uh, Ron Haslam well oh goodness gracious me that was Gary Cowan Gary Cowan who storms through to take the lead that really was incredible I mean he's just riding so good isn't he Chris I mean he just br outbreak the Norton like it was going backwards it's hard to believe he's on the crest of the wave he's had some good rides and would you believe that in this senior race a 250 Yamaha leads. He leads the door. Then Brian Morrison. Then Roger Burnett. And we're looking there. Is would you believe it is Ron Haslam of the Pepsi Suzuki? He must have been in about 10th place, Roger. He certainly was, Chris. He made a bad start on the first uh, left hander. He got in the middle of the pack and he couldn't. There was nowhere for him to go. So he's got a lot of work. Brian Morrison beginning to put some pressure on the second place man Steve Cole. There, going round the hairpin. The leader goes over the start finish line was Ron Hassel. And, and it is incredible that Gary Cowan, who took the lead about one third of the opening lap into the front, is still out in front. Uh, Ron Aslan there, Chris, was looking down at the rear end of the motorcycle, so whether he's got a problem maybe with the tyre, we'll have to wait and see. No problem for this man, Gary Cowan out in front on the second of 12 laps. And it, He's, not, he's pulling away from the opposition. Absolutely incredible. Steve Cole, then Brian Morris, then Roger Burnett, then it was Phil McCallum, and there's Eddie Laker. Oh, and a bit of a problem there for number 27, Steve Haslett. Well, the end of the race for Steve Haslett. Only his pride injured, though, I'm glad to say. Steve Cole in second place, Brian Morrison. There going straight on and he's riding with a, a dislocated shoulder so uh, not really a surprise I think uh, Roger. Yeah George Farlow he's had some problems today he's had an engine seizure on his three cylinder and I just wonder if it's seized maybe coming down the straight into that corner and he had to go straight on. And uh, word from the pits is that uh, Eddie Laycock has just pulled out so uh, end of the race for the Dubliner. No Problem, no worries at all, though, for Gary Cowan. And really, you begin to ask whether anyone's going to catch him, Roger. Well, I just can't believe this, Chris. I mean, uh, he's got the HRC works bikes behind him. He's got the 
Brad Orton behind him. He's on a 250. And Steve Cole on the north end. Another one. We were depleted on the start line, and they are dropping out like flies. And the still the 250 of Gary Coward is out in front. He goes around the hairpin. Brian Morrison up into second place, and Roger Burnett made a complete mess of that little corner there. Yeah, he certainly did, Chris. Obviously, he was trying to get up with uh, uh, Gary Cowan, who's leading, and, and make some impact, but uh, he left the brakes a little too late and maybe locked the front wheel a little bit and had to let the brake off again and go, and go really wide. Ron Haslam in eighth place at the moment, the man looking for his hat trick. But, uh, well, he's got a lot of juice to catch up. The race leader, I'll tell you that, there is Phil McCallum in third place. Behind him, Roger Minnett, Gary Cowan. Then Brian Morrison. Then Phil McCullough, then Roger Burnett. Haslam moving ahead of another place. Dave Leach was the man who lost one place. Roger Burnett looking for the inside line. Is that uh, Patrick uh, Van de Goorberg? Uh, <laughs> behind Burnett, it looked like the second dot shot machine. It did, yeah, and just in front of Burnett, Phil McCallum was nearly making the same mistake as Burnett did the lap before by overbreaking. So, the dot shot Yamaha, just a 250cc motorcycle, leads the 750 Honda of Brian Morrison, then it's McCallum and Burnett, and Haslam is now, whatever the problems were, he's talking about Morrison, the Scotsman, he had such a wonderful season last year. From Kevcoddy in five, 28 years of age. Now, can he catch Gary Cowan? Can he get ahead? Can he win this one? It's a long time since Brian Morrison had a big win this year. It is, Chris. Uh, one of the only wins he's had was at the race of the year at Mallory Park in the last 1,000cc race. I'm pleased that Brian's coming back on form. He hasn't had a good year. He's had a lot of engine problems, but uh, he's looking good in this one. But I think Haslam's going to be the danger man still. Now, he, if he had a problem, well, it's all sorted out now. Five laps gone as Brian Morrison hits the front. Morrison leads from Gary Coward, but only for a fraction of a second, because as Brian Morrison thought about going into the right-hander, Gary Cowan had done it. Well, if there was an award for late braking, Gary Cowan would get it because he's going into the end of that start and finish straight. Unbelievable. He's just leaving his brakes off to the very last minute and stopping that little 250 beautifully. The 250, of course, much lighter than the 750, uh, Roger, but nowhere near so powerful. Hasn't got the acceleration. He certainly hasn't, and uh, you've still got to pull that 250 up, I know, but uh, you haven't got the weight of the big bike, but there's Morrison showing us how much speed he's got. And Cowan going through on the inside. And Gary Cowan says, well, you can be as quick as you like down the straight and shine, but you're not going to be as quick as me into and round the corner. And look at them both flat on the tank. They both mean business. Over the line they go again. Six laps gone, the halfway stage in this race. Six laps gone, six to go. And again, Gary Cowan does it in exactly the same place. And Brian Morrison must be livid. He must be wondering what he has to do to get away from Gary Cowan, because Gary Cowan can really stop that 250. Um, like you said, because it's not so heavy, so it's a lot easier to pull up when you put the brakes on. Morrison's got twice the weight there, with his bike being a four-stroke and having four cylinders. And that looks to me like Ronald McDonald Haslam, the Grand Prix star in third place, and Morrison goes past Cowan. Cowan will look for the inside line, and Cowan goes back again. And Cowan regains the lead, and Morrison wants to be brave. But both of them are in for the shot. Well, it's not a shot, because they were... Oh, and look at the rear end of Ron Haslam's Suzuki. And uh, Haslam has arrived. I warned you he was going to arrive. He was charging up through the field. There is Cowan in first place. Brian Morrison is in second place. And, uh, well, they're about to take the Pepsi Taste Challenge, I think. Any minute now, Roger. Yeah, well, obviously, Ron's got the right bike for the job with it being a Grand Prix bike, but he's certainly putting a great show on for everybody here today. And it's super to see him riding it so hard and wheeling everywhere. It's fantastic. Let's take nothing away, though, from these two men in front of him. Ron Haslam is catching them. Ron Haslam is going to catch them. Ron Haslam almost certainly... 
What a ride from Gary Cowan and Brian Morris. And Brian Morris look at the pace of the Suzuki. And Cowan again goes for the inside line. And Ron's trying to pass all of them round the outside. Well, that was truly impressive. Cowan leads. Morris is next. Ron has the passes the ball with the wheelie. Seven laps gone. Eight laps gone. Let's get it right. Eight laps gone. Four more laps to go. And Ron has them. And Cowan's going to pass them both. Gary Cowan, no respecter of authority, age, experience, or wealth. And I say wealth in terms of cost of motorcycle, because that 500 Suzuki in second place, well, how much would that cost to buy? Uh, Roger Marshall? Well, if you wanted that particular one of Haslam's today, you'd probably have to pay 100, 200,000 for it. It must be worth that much. And uh, Gary Cowan on basically a production Yamaha. Oh, and look at Haslam say, don't play silly so-and-sos with me. Thank you very much indeed. And Cowan says, well, no, yes, not this time. And the tail end gets in the way. And Ron has to, has to go wider than he wanted. And Gary Cowan almost went through on the inside again. Ron Haslam will not be allowed to doze. He won't be allowed to take things easily. Well, I think if anyone before this meeting, Roger, had told you that Gary Cowan on a 250 Yamaha would be the man who was going to give Ron Haslam a hard time in any of the open races, you would have said he was insane. Well, I would have bet everything I own that it, would, it wouldn't be possible, Chris. And uh, he's demonstrating that it can be done on a 250 today. We've seen the speeds at Grand Prix and on British circuits creep down the 250 times, and uh, he's proving today that a 250 nearly on the right circuit can keep up with them. And uh, Ron Haslam looking for the uh, showtime, looking for the wheelies. Not on the pace, but look at the Yamaha come back. The others put on the brakes while Cowan is still accelerating. Haslam leads. Cowan goes back into second place. Morrison is third. They are coming round to complete ten laps. Two more laps to go. And Haslam wheelies half the length of the start and finish straight. Morrison goes back into second place. But I wouldn't hold your breath, Brian. And again, Cowan does it again. And they close on Haslam. I think Ron is obviously enjoying himself now, but he's going to be ever so, have to be ever so careful on the last corner if he's wheeling on the back straight, because Cowan certainly won't give in. And Cowan, it was again looking for that inside line, but that was the line that Ron Haslam had got. Well, this is the first non-World Championship race meeting that Ron Haslam has been able to ride in this year. And he, I'm sure he never thought that Gary Cowan would be giving him a hard time in it. Ron Haslam thoroughly enjoying himself. He likes riding uh, in Northern Ireland. He's ridden in the northwest. Oh, and Cowan going through on the inside of Morrison. Forced to move over. Cowan didn't give him any choice then, did he? We're coming up to the start of the 11th, of the 12th and final lap. One lap to go, Roger. This is incredible stuff, the way Cowan's outbreaking Brian. I don't think Brian knows what to do next. Here he goes again, showing the lightweight bike how he can stop it. Gary Cowan up into second place again. Haslam just a few yards away from them. Cowan riding superbly. Let's take nothing away from Brian Morrison, though, of course, on the 750 Honda. More cubic capacities, but heavier. Probably a little bit slower, maybe, out of the corners. And if Haslam dozes too much, Cowan comes with Hammond. There's a tail ender in the way, and Ron Haslam can't afford to doze. The slower man, Haslam, goes past. Cowan, chin on the tank, doesn't want to lose any pace down the back straight. And Morrison, oh, Cowan goes through on the inside again. Oh, and he goes wide. He makes a mistake, and he may pay for it. Haslam is going to win. Who is going to be second? Haslam wins. The sprint is on to the line. And I really would like to say maybe Morrison. We think it was Morrison. Gary Cowan is third. Well, what a superb race to bring this wonderful Kirkustown meeting to an end. Ron Haslam the winner, Brian Morrison takes second place, and Gary Cowan, a brave fighting Gary Cowan, takes third spot. Right, Ron Haslam, three wins out of three races, and what a tremendous scrap that was, the last one. Yeah, it, uh, I thought it got a problem at the beginning We oil on the tyre, but I think it was just the tyre that hadn't warmed up enough. And uh, I was sort of made sure that I'd not go wrong before I sort of let go for it.